Six years ago, Victorian Phil O'Keefe was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. My particular variant affects my upper limbs, upper torso, so my arms, my shoulders, upper back and my chest. Uh, my legs still function, I can still walk around, but in terms of lifting things up or holding things, I've lost all strength and all the dexterity in my fingers. So I really can't do a lot of things I would normally do. Um, and as the disease progresses, obviously it gets worse and worse and worse. Ever since his diagnosis, Phil has been determined to seize any opportunities that come his way. So he was the ideal volunteer to test out a groundbreaking device developed by the University of Melbourne and US company Synchron. A tiny brain implant designed to allow people with paralysis to control technology using nothing but their thoughts. So what we've done is we've got a device called the Stentrode. It's got sensors on it. It's inserted through the jugular vein in the neck and similar to methods and you know, existing procedures to remove blood clots, the device is pushed through a tube up to the area of interest, in our case, the motor cortex. Uh, the device is deployed, and when it's deployed from a very small tube, it itself expands so that it can push the electrodes or the, the sensors that are gonna record neural information against the vessel wall. And then the device is, is held to a wireless transmitter that's uh, implanted under the skin in the, in the chest. And when the participant thinks about performing an action the same way you and I would, uh, we can pick up these signals and then we wirelessly transmit them out of the body and then interpret these and use them as commands to control computers or assistive technology. At the time, it was clearly described to me that this is not going to benefit me. They're not going to put me into this trial so they can help me with my life. This trial is about can we put this device into a human being? And can we do it safely? And will it work? Anything above and beyond that will be a bonus. It's a clinical trial, so the benefit for this is for those who will come later on. This is a chance to give back. And I think my father often spoke about you owe society, so I've never did that. You owe back to the people to give. In April last year, Phil had the stentrode successfully implanted into his brain at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Can you minimise all the stuff on the screen for me? Every week since then, researchers have visited Phil to record his brain signals and translate them into computer algorithms. When someone thinks about moving or performing a different action, part of their brain becomes more active than other parts. And we're measuring the change in activity. And if, for example, someone wants to move their arm, then their, you know, the arm region of their brain becomes activated and we can pick that up and, and see and interpret that, yes, they're trying to move their arm because there's more activity in that region. In my case, my left ankle is the best signal to pick up. So they've written an algorithm that says, when Phil goes to tap his left ankle, make a mouse click. So he's pressing this button that's in his head now, abstractly. After a full year of experiments, Phil's bionic brain is far exceeding early expectations. I've responded to emails, obviously. I've done online banking, so I paid bills via it. I've gone to websites, news websites, for instance, and scrolled through articles. There hasn't been a day gone by we haven't gone we took big strides today. That was a good session. We learned something today about how this can and can't work. So Phil's going to turn the lights on in this room. Recently, so Phil had smart switches installed in his house. Hey, light turns on. Which means he can even turn the lights on without touching a thing. It's just, it's mind blowing. It really is mind blowing. And to think that we've just scratched the surface of what we could possibly do with this. Been able to turn your lights on or off. Imagine when, we get, when they get this technology completely portable, completely right, that you could be confined to a chair, you could be a home alone, you could turn your lights on or off as needs be, turn your heater on, turn your aircon on, turn your TV on, turn your kettle on, make a cup of hot coffee or something. 
you can control, be able to control your house the way that you and I normally do control our house by being able to just think about doing that. It's just, you know, space age stuff, it really, really is. The stench road has now been successfully trialled by four Victorians with motor neuron disease. And researchers hope this is just the beginning. Eventually, this technology could be used to control electronic wheelchairs, vehicles, or even robotic limbs. Yeah, it, it does feel a bit like sci-fi. Uh, I think we're, we're certainly excited with, with how it's gone. We'll be expanding the trial from Victoria to other Australian states, uh, expanding over into the, the US and, and certainly trying to help a large number of people with paralysis of many different types. You know, if, if there's any reason why the, the brain can't connect to the body, then, then we have an opportunity that, that we might be able to, to restore that for them. It's just so exciting to see it in action. And to have the opportunity to be involved in that, yeah, it's, it's great, it really is. Loving every minute of it.